Do you remember the first time you learned how butterflies came to be? As a young boy, I know I was flabbergasted. I just thought butterflies were born as little baby butterflies. Silly as that sounds, I could not conceive how a caterpillar wraps itself in a cocoon and emerges as something completely different. To know it or to know about it is one thing. But to actually see the process is another. This miracle of metamorphosis still amazes me to this day. And I'm just in awe, really, uh, of the incredible things in nature that God has gifted us with. Makes us wonder, how could that be possible? Or how could that become that? Nowhere do those questions arise more often than at the sacred table every time I gather with all of you to celebrate Mass. It is here where upon consecration, the bread and wine become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. It's the solemnity that we are celebrating today. How could that be possible? How could that become that? This is a doubt that, sadly, is all too common today, even among Catholics. So many Catholics have not been catechized well with regard to the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And those outside of the Catholic Church believe it to be only symbolic of Christ's presence, or at least that he is not substantially present. The real presence of Christ is the central reality of our Catholic faith. It is a key doctrine that sets us Catholics apart from other Christians. It is central to our identity. But although the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist is something that is true and we hold dearly, there's really more to the question of how can that become that? We need to go beyond questioning how can the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. There's one very important component in the Eucharist that we don't always think about. You know, if I had a large mirror right now, I would hold it up in front of all of you and me as well. Because that component is us. It's us. I think we forget that it's, it's not only about what happens at the sacred table. It's also about what happens to each and every one of us, for each and every one of us, and within each and every one of us, and also among us as a faith community. The question how can that become that, is really asking how can we become the body of Christ? How we can be transformed. Did the disciples understand that they were in the presence of a ritual being born like those folks in the time of Moses? Did they have any sense that tearing off a chunk of the bread was the beginning for them to a great participation in divine life? To think about this is to consider how the gift of the Eucharist is always, always for us as a ritual decision. And in that decision, our transformation begins. It is a ritual decision to participate in, or not, in the life of God handed on to us in this gift of the body and blood of Christ. The food he provides is his very self so that we can become more like him. What happens at the altar is not a show, let alone a magic show, for our entertainment and we're just mere spectators. No, we are participants 
and we receive the body of Christ to more perfectly become the body of Christ for a world in desperate need of Christ's transforming love. And yes, God knows our faults and our failings, our fears and our doubts, in our selfishness and cynicism. But he also knows and sees what is possible for each of us and what is possible for us as a people. It is why the Eucharist must never, ever be politicized or used to humiliate, humiliate others in public. And I quote from Evangelii Gallium, the Eucharist is not a prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and nourishment for the weak. Frequently, we act as arbiters of grace rather than its facilitators. But the church is not a toll house. The church is a house of the Father, where there is a place for everyone with all their problems. Right now, I'd like for all of us to look at ourselves. Yes, with our weaknesses and our imperfections, but also see the beautiful creature that God made each of us to be. Allow God to take what looks like not much, like a caterpillar, and bring about real transformation, like that butterfly, that can bring us closer to seeing as God sees us and loving as God loves. The Eucharist is a miracle, and it is also a promise, for Jesus wishes to remain with us and in us, helping us to seek him, to see him, and serve him by how we love, honor, serve, and forgive one another. Hello, OLPH. My name is Mary Lynn Januszewski, and I'm the Director of Finance and Operations at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Parish in Glenview, Illinois. And this message comes to you with heartfelt gratitude and thanks for your ongoing generosity and support of OLPH Parish. This overwhelming generosity allows us to continue to serve and to minister to the parish community in so many different ways. So, Thank you, OLPH, for all you do. You are much appreciated.